When paleontologists found Triceratops in the same layers of Earth as T. rex, they assumed the frills and horns were defensive structures. But as other Ceratopsians came to light, their elaborate headgear was not so easily explained. They were too widely varied to be used simply for defense, too fragile for anything, attack, defense, or sexual headbutting. To learn why the dinosaurs had such elaborate headgear, paleontologists looked to modern animals. Antelopes developed many sizes and shapes of horns, but not for attack or defense. The horns signal their sexual maturity to mates and intimidate would-be rivals. Ceratopsian dinosaurs like Pachyrhinoceros developed different headgear at different stages. Paleontologist Darren Tankey of the Royal Tyrrell Museum of Alberta, Canada studies Pachyrhinoceros fossils for clues to the animal's age and sex. What we have here are three casts of reconstructed skulls of Pachyrhinosaurus. This one which we believe to be a female, this is a male, and this is a juvenile. The frill on the juveniles and young adults have this simple pie crust edge type effect. And in the adults, we have some very large horns developing on the back of the frill. These do not develop until the animal reaches full adult size and presumed sexual maturity. And previously it was believed these horns were for protection only. I think it's now fairly clear that this is Mother Nature's way of saying that A, I'm a male or female Pachyrhinosaurus, and B, I am of breeding age. The sex of the Pachyrhinosaurus is anyone's guess until it reaches adulthood and develops headgear. Paleontologists believe the adult female's horns are less ornate than the longer and more pronounced horns of the full-grown male. Those dinosaurs without elaborate headgear, like the giant brontosaurs, may have advertised their intentions with color, turning themselves into walking billboards for sex. Barker thinks the largest dinosaurs, unlike large land animals today, were quite colorful. The reason big animals today are gray is because they are colorblind. They don't see in colors. They're big mammals. Big mammals are colorblind. But birds see color. Well, alligators and crocodiles see color too. So do lizards. You see a panoply of bright colors in fish and frogs. Did dinosaurs see color? Their eyes were built like birds, mostly, a little bit like crocs. And they must have seen a full range of reds and yellows and blues. So, of course, a bull brontosaurus. It has some iridescent blue around its eye, maybe a ring of yellow and red around its throat to advertise itself. The most elaborate assortment of crests and colors belong to the duck-billed dinosaurs, like Critosaurus, whose classic profile earned it the name Noble Lizard. Its cousin, Sorolophus, used a two-foot head spike to get itself noticed. The fan-shaped hollow crest of the Lambiosaurus surely made it stand out in a crowd. But the most prominent of the duck-billed dinosaur crests was that of the Parasaurolophus. Of all the extravagant sexual displays, this was the most baffling. Weighing up to four tons, the mighty vegetarian was endowed with a six-foot hollow crest. This majestic headgear mystified David Weissempel, a paleontologist from Johns Hopkins University. The crest itself is very, very fragile. It's built out of very thin bone. Probably couldn't withstand a lot of this head-to-head -head stuff like you see in bighorn sheep. Because many Parasaurolophus fossils had been found in marine sediment, many paleontologists suggested the horn was used as a snorkel when the giant beast went swimming. But a Swedish paleontologist named Carl Wieman solved the mystery. Carl Wieman in Uppsala got himself a duckbill dinosaur with a hollow crest. He looked at it and said, it looks like a trombone. It was a trombone. It was for making loud courtship noises. David Weishempel wondered what the 70 million year old love song of the Parasaurolophus sounded like. He knew that when the animal exhaled, the air would shoot up the windpipe 
to the back of the crest into the throat and out the snout. Why Sample built himself a horn as long as the crest and taught himself to play it. Well, this contraption that I've got in my hands here is, in fact, a model of the crest of Parasaurolophus. It's the right size and the right shape for Parasaurolophus. It's built out of PVC tubing. And the reason I built it was to get a better sense as to the kinds of sound that Parasaurolophus would have made. So why don't I play it for you? This unique love song no doubt made the Parasaurolophus the diva of the dinosaurs. Using the trombones in their heads, they serenaded mates and repelled rivals. After all the singing, stomping, and headbutting was over, the dinosaurs finally got down to some real romance. Just how they did it, the fossils don't say. But some scientists have reached their own conclusions. The late Beverly Halstead, a British professor of geology and zoology, was noted for his candid theories of dinosaur sex. Is to discuss one or two aspects he speculated that the male mounted the female from the rear, twisting the tail under hers to align the sex organs. The male would have to keep one foot on the ground to avoid crushing.